Now we're going to take a look at a few special types of graphs that are generated using polar expressions. The first one we're going to look at is called a limason. Now a limason has this standard format for the equation. r equals a plus b cosine theta or r equals a plus b sine theta. Now Let's take a look at what one of those graphs would look like. I'm going to put in the graph 2 plus 3 cosine theta. I'm also changing my window to negative 6 by 6 for x and y, so we can zoom in a little bit and see more of the characteristics. When I look at this graph, you'll see that I get this strange shape that looks kind of like a heart on its side with a little inner loop there. I can trace, and you'll notice when I trace, that now my coordinates, instead of being x and y, are r and theta. And I have my equation up there. If I trace by moving to the right, I can see how my theta values are jumping and my r values are going around. And you can see that as I get closer and closer, at 90 degrees, my r value is 2. Oh. oh, but now at 150 degrees, my r value is negative. So instead of being in the second quadrant, which is where 150 degrees is located, my r value and my location on my graph is actually in the fourth quadrant because I'm looking at 150 degrees and backing up approximately negative 0.6. Now, as I get to 180, you'll see that my r value is negative 1. If we look at those equations, my equation was r equals 2 plus 3 cosine theta. When theta was equal to 0, then my equation becomes r equals 2 plus 3 cosine 0, or 2 plus 3 times 1, or 5. But at theta equals 180, then my equation becomes r equals 2 plus 3 cosine 180, or r equals 2 minus 3, since cosine of 180 is negative 1. And I end up with negative 1. So here, theta equals 0 degrees, and here, theta equaled 180 degrees. So we see that even though at 180 degrees I'm looking out along the negative x-axis, my location is actually along the positive x-axis because my r value is negative 1. Whenever my b value is larger than my a value, r can be negative. So if, if B is greater than A, then R will be negative at some point. Or at some value of theta which means that I have the opportunity to create this smaller inner loop. So here, if B greater than A. Now, if B is less than A, then I never have the opportunity to go backwards, so I won't have an inner loop. I'll get something that looks 
like this graph. Try it. Try reversing the 3 and the 2 in our graph. And finally, if they're exactly equal to each other, there will be some value of theta which creates an r value of 0. So our graph will touch the origin, but not create a loop. We say it has a cusp, and we call it a cardioid. We created all of these graphs using the first type of polar equation, using the a plus b cosine theta. Use your calculator and see what happens when you change cosine theta to sine theta.